Hey, welcome in. You're listening to the weekend edition of the Corland Economics Report. I'm Al Corland. Appreciate you joining me. This, this program is also being videotaped, so I hope you enjoy that. We're in New York City right now at the uh, Hard Asset Investment Conference right on Times Square. Let me tell you, coming to New York a couple times a year is the best. Went to a Yankees game, as most of our listeners are aware, uh, a week ago last Sunday. Great game, great stadium, wonderful people. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to, we're here to pick the brains of the real experts in the industry. And my buddy Mar uh, Marin Katusa definitely falls into that category. An absolutely brilliant individual. And he's joining us for the first segment. Marin, thanks for joining me, buddy. Oh, it's a pleasure. Marin, I had an interesting question posed to me this morning. I was, uh, I was on a television program and the, the host, I couldn't believe, but the host was very, very, uh, I don't want to say anti-gold, but I certainly wouldn't call him a gold bull. He was more interested in the U.S. dollar. You know, his comment to me was, if gold is so damn important, Big Al, why can't you pay your income taxes in it? And, and I kind of looked at him and thought, wow, now there's an interesting statement. How can you not be bullish, man? I think you have to look at it from which perspective are you looking from the hard currency, from the equities, and right now the, the situation's building that you can't produce the material economically any new production for what it's trading at really when you incorporate the massive capexes. So eventually you look at the massive capex for copper mines, gold mines, silver is usually a byproduct from either of those two, uh, even the major oil development. So the situation is building and people are bullish on the US dollar currently because it's the you know place to go of last defense. But that will change when the valuation of gold gets corrected to over two thousand dollars, which eventually will. You got a, any any timeline involved in that? I would say probably within twelve months, my opinion, but you're the man. What do you think? I look at it more as you can right now find gold trading at such a discount from certain producers that its current price is valued at half of what it really is. So whether it goes to 2,000 or 3,000 is irrelevant. That's bonus, that's icing on the cake. You can make a lot of money buying the right stocks. So the oh, price yeah. is irrelevant. You know, I agree with you 100%. The little blonde lady and I are putting our money where our mouth is. We bought more securities last month uh, in a company. It's all disclosed on our website. I think these are bargain basement prices. I, I don't understand the absolute abysmal situation, Marin, that the uh, that the resource sector is in right now in terms of the equities. Well, I'll explain. Like, our fund has done very well, but I talked to other fund managers who right now don't know what to do because they've invested in these situations, they're fully invested in these equities, but they're getting fund redemption. So the investors in these funds are fleeing because they're scared and they've lost value. But it's when you sell, now there's no new money coming in to support the supply and demand of paper selling and buying. So the beauty is, if you have the courage, you can buy stock today, base metal producers, gold producers, trading at 55% uh, of price to now. Oh, which easily. a year ago, yeah. that's what you were paying for exploration. Exactly. So right now we have the ultimate sale in resources. I agree 100%. Let's, let's talk a little bit about, about energy now. I, I'm also very much of a bull in the, in the energy sector. We've got three positions in the energy sector. I'm very, very comfortable with them. You're the energy guy for KC Research. I think KC Research is the best in the business. What do you think for the future there, man? Well, we've been saying for many years, it depends on what you're looking at. From oil, you got to break it up between Brent and WTI. Natural gas is a very localized market, but I am very, very, very bullish on the price of oil moving forward. Mainly, if you look at the major producers globally, it's not Exxon, it's not Shell, it's not BP, it's the national oil companies. Take Venezuela, for example. They subsidize their gas prices. Right now, it's 18 cents a liter. All right. Now, that given, you look at the massive fields that have been developed by you know, the Exxons of the world, these prices today, they are putting over 50% of the revenue into social programs, not back into the operating expenses and capex of increasing production. So eventually, we're going to hit that inflection point, and it's going to be very bullish for the investors in these equities. You know, another question that I was asked earlier today regarding energy is, you know, Al, what do you think about alternative energy, et cetera? And, and my feeling on that is, Alternative energy ultimately is going to become more important than it is today, but you know, in terms of oil, you're not going to displace that for a long, long time. No, you, you look at its utility. 
for all the different right. uses in, in, you know, between plastics and you know, the, the movement of oil and the logistics of it, whereas the green energy, unfortunately, with natural gas prices where they are in North America, without the subsidies, which are decreasing now with the DOE uh, loans, the reality is, is it's not economic without the government subsidies. Couldn't agree more. Now, you're pretty active in the market. You have a company that you, if I'm not mistaken, started, a copper company. Let's hear about it. Yeah, Copper Mountain is, uh, you know, basically, I'm a big believer in investing in people. And Jim O'Rourke and Rod Shire, these guys are what you truly want to invest in. Jim O'Rourke's a legend in the business. He's built six copper mines. Uh, we built this company from private to now Canada's third largest producing company. Today we put out the financials, and here's a perfect example. Today we are trading at just under four times earnings, and we're trading at less than four dollars, where 12 months ago, when the market was good, and the expectation of producing, we were trading at twice the price we are today. So is the company on sale? Definitely. Am I biased? Definitely, because I'm a shareholder, I'm a director, but I couldn't be more proud of what Jim O'Rourke and the team has done. Well, I have to say, number one, you, full disclosure, Marin, it, Marin does have a major interest here. He's a big shareholder in the company. Uh, in, in, fr from my standpoint, I'm not a shareholder in the company, and the company's not a sponsor on our site either, so I can say whatever I want here without worrying about offending anybody, but I have to tell you, if, if you have any interest whatsoever in base metals, and you know, I really believe in diversification. I mean, yeah, I'm a gold bug, okay? But I'm also a real estate bug, believe it or not. I think real estate is great right now. Nothing at all wrong with base metals. The world cannot exist without copper, purely and simply. So I think you really need to be diversified throughout throughout the entire sector. What are you guys planning on doing this year with Copper Mountain? Well, look at it today. We're trading at half of what it would cost to build the mine today. So what we look at doing is creating a major cash flow, which we're doing, and then at that point, we'll perhaps acquire other near-term deposits or perhaps produce a mine, so we'll see what happens. Interesting point. Let's switch horses again. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Now, I know you're, you live in Canada, okay? We have an election coming up, believe it or not, in the United States, okay? We've got an income, uh, incumbent president who really hasn't done very much in terms of stimulating the economy. Uh, we have a challenger who doesn't appear to be the most popular guy in the world either. Uh, I don't want any predictions in terms of the outcome of the election, but in my opinion, I don't think you're going to see anything economically drastic happen between now and November. But after that, I have to tell you, Marin, I think it, I, I, I think you could see, I, I don't want to be you know, a, a scare tactic type guy, but I think you could see some really significant collapses. You think I'm nuts? No, I don't actually. I think you have to be very, very careful on where your money is post-election. Yeah, I would agree 100%. Where would you be? That's a good point. Well, you know, how we at Casey Research really believe is you have to have more than one passport. Number two, make sure you have an alternative residence and make sure all your eggs aren't in one basket. So you can go to the website at caseyresearch.com and we really believe in diversifying yourself from political risk. Well, I have to tell you, I'm a big believer in diversification. Caseyresearch.com, by the way, is very easy to get to. Just click on the banner on our site. Uh, you get all the information you want. I've known Doug, interestingly enough, since 19, I believe it was 1983 when I introduced him at a conference similar to this in Boston. Uh, he was he was in his heyday. His book uh, Crisis Investing uh, was a bestseller just just a little bit earlier. Doug is a great guy. He has built an organization that, in my mind, is second to none. It's second to none because of people like Marin Katusa, Louis James. Uh, it's just a very 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 strong strong stable of people. Last question. Going to have to put you on the hot spot here. A year from now, where are we going to be with gold? In your opinion? I believe we'll probably be between somewhere 1550 and 1700 in 12 months. 1550 and 1700. Yeah. Maron, Kathy and I are going to bet you and your lovely wife a dinner. And I'm saying in 12 months, I'm looking at between 18 and 2100. A little bit bigger a spread, but I'll bet you we're going to be there. The Italian restaurant of Marina's Choice, not yours. Been chatting with Mara Catusa. Marin's a really good guy, he's a very bright guy. You got to read his stuff in Casey Research. There is more information packed into his columns and the other columns than you're going to get anyplace else. Stick around, Big Al's going to be right back.